Hey guys, Drifter here. Welcome to Modern Warfare Remastered In-Depth. In today's episode, we're going to be reviewing the G3 Assault Rifle. When COD 4 first came out, this may have been one of my least favorite weapons in the entire game. I really didn't enjoy playing with it, and I was kind of bad with it. However, uh, going back and playing Modern Warfare Remastered after playing many other COD games, I can say, you know, this gun wasn't so bad. I think I was just more bad with it. Maybe not the best gun in the game, but definitely not a bad one. So uh, what you're going to see here today is gameplay with every single attachment and a little bit of naked or no attachment gameplay. And I'm running stopping power in all of them except for when I'm using the suppressor. That's going to be UAV jammer. And let's jump straight into the stats. It'll deal 40 damage up close, close being a relative term since the range is really long, and it'll decrease down to 30 damage at a distance. This means it'll be between three and four shots to kill, just depending on how far away the enemy is, which is identical to the M16 and AK-40. So your G3 hit markers should be pretty much identical to those weapons depending on range and your ability to aim. However, the weapon is going to be best with stopping power because with stopping power you can increase that to 56 damage up close and 42 at a distance, meaning that it will take between 2 and 3 shots to kill depending on how far away you are from the enemy, and making this a 2 shot kill assault rifle is absolutely the way to go. It's a 2 hitter quit, pop pop and done. Very very effective. Headshots will deal 1.4x damage, which can be useful at long range range or without stopping power because it'll basically cause one less shot to kill except you can't kill in one shot even with a headshot. So if you're not using stopping power, headshots are always good and if you are using stopping power it's still good to get headshots at extremely long ranges because it'll still cause you to get one less shot to kill. Speaking of ranges, the maximum damage range is 45 meters which is halfway across most of the maps in the game. It's such a colossal distance there's not even really a point in testing it because you're not going to be engaging people beyond 45 meters very often. It's a really, for Call of Duty, that is a very, very big range, so just keep in mind the gun has awesome range. However, if you put a suppressor on it, the maximum damage range is going to decrease down to 15. Now, of course, you can still shoot people after that, but you'll be, deal be dealing your minimum damage, which could be three or four shots to kill, depending on if you're doing stopping power or not. Really not ideal, kind of ruins the weapon in my opinion, and I would not recommend it. Matter of fact, the suppressor gameplay was the most challenging challenging for me to get in this entire episode. And another weird thing about the suppressor is that it causes the knife animation to kind of bug out and be slower than it should be, but this is only when the suppressor is attached. So your ability to knife and recover from that knifing is slower. It's a small penalty, I know, but for some people it might be frustrating, and in clutch moments it might get you killed. Now one of the cool things about the G3 and COD 4 in general is that this is before they really knew about modded controllers and fire rate caps, so the maximum rate of fire is 1,200 rounds per minute. I'll say that again, the maximum rate of fire is 1,200 rounds per minute. Now this weapon is semi-automatic, which means you need a next level trigger finger to actually pull the trigger that fast or click the mouse that fast. And realistically, very few people are going to have that ability. Most of you will probably be firing between four and maybe 600 rounds per minute. Some of the pros and more experienced players might push it up to seven or 800 if you're really good, but it does have a ton of potential. Speaking of which, the G3's time to kill is limited limited only by your aim and trigger finger. The gun's pretty accurate, which we'll discuss in a little bit, and you can shoot it incredibly fast and it deals high damage. So if you've got good aim, and if you've got a good trigger finger, you can really dump truck people with this weapon. It's a very high, high skill, high risk, high reward kind of deal. However, it does have several annoying downsides. Number one is that it has the overall slowest reload animation. Uh, it has the same reload cancel time as the other assault rifles, but when it comes to going through the full animation, which mode most people watch and do. It's going to be slower than everything else, which can be frustrating, and it has slightly slower than average raise and drop times. This has to if you pick it up off the ground, first time pulling it out in overkill, or swapping to your pistol, it can actually cause you to swap to your pistol slower, which is again not a very fun thing to have. One thing the G3 does have in spades is accuracy, and we'll start off with the idle sway. The idle sway is extremely low. It's tied with the M16 for lowest idle sway. This is especially noticeable if you put a red dot sight on it. You'll notice that it just about doesn't wobble, which allows you to aim very, very precise and pick people off very, very effectively. Overall, the accuracy is high, but the precision is kind of low, which is what miffed me with the gun to begin with. It has some left-right recoil. A 
lot of the semi-automatics or marksman rifles, or a lot of weapons in general, have vertical recoil, which I find very easy to deal with. This one has some side-to-side -side wobble. I would say it's more diagonal. It'll kick up left, and then it'll kick up right. And I don't find it to be very consistent, which is means not precise. However, if I try not to worry about that and just focus on the height and let the left-right do its own kind of thing, you'll find that the overall accuracy on this weapon can be quite high. High enough to where... Honestly, the best way to use it is to probably put it on target and spam your ever-living heart out, which is just... I just don't mentally uh, use marksman rifles that way, so that's a weakness of mine. You'll notice in many of these clips my trigger finger could use some improvement because I think about getting every single shot on point like it's some sort of military simulator when it's not. The better strategy is to just put the crosshairs on somebody and hose them into oblivion with your trigger finger. One thing you don't want to do though is you shouldn't be challenging people with the hip fire when you have the G3. Hip fire is not going to be fun. It's statistically the same as the other assault rifles, but since it's semi-automatic that does tend to make it kind of wonky and people tend not to handle it very well in those kind of clustery clutch moments. Definitely go with the pistol or knife instead of hip fire. You won't get very many hip fire kills. And I'm going to say the iron sights are pretty good. Uh, they're not perfect, but they're a solid 9 out of 10. Like, those are easily usable. However, there isn't really a reason not to use the red dot sight. I mean, a naked G3 fine, that makes it easy to get kills, but you're not going to be running the suppressor very much because of the range penalty, and you're not going to want to run the ACOG for some reasons we'll talk about later. Uh, so there's not really a reason not to put a red dot sight on it, so you'll mostly be using that instead of the default sight. Speaking of ACOG, if you add an ACOG sight, it'll increase your recoil and uh, decrease your center speed, which again in increases your recoil. So it'll kick and wobble significantly. It'll also cause your idle sway to increase very significantly, so there'll be a lot of wobble to it. And it'll increase your aim down sights time slightly. So there are several penalties uh, that come with adding an ACOG sight. However, that being said, I found that given the range of the weapon and the fact that I'm kind of a dum-dum and I like to think of it like a sniper or like a slow shooting kind of pick people off weapon, it didn't actually handle that bad or, this is subjective, feel that bad with an ACOG sight. I was able to make it work. Uh, it wasn't the worst experience ever, but it certainly wasn't the best. Red Dot's still probably the way to go, but if you really want that extra range for BOG or some long range maps, you can make do with the ACOG sight. And finally, the record recommendations. I think the G3 is best with stopping power, red dot sight, deep impact, and bandolier. Stopping power, red dot sight is pretty standard in this game. I'm going to recommend it for a lot of things. Deep impact can be very important on this particular weapon because of the high damage. You can wall bang people very easily. You can just punch right through and screw their situation up. And bandolier, because I do tend to spam with it, it's only got 20 rounds in the magazine, so your overall ammo capacity is low. And with a spammy trigger finger, you'll burn through it pretty quickly. So bandolier is your friend. Guys, that's all for this in-depth episode. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something useful. If you did, don't forget to like, favorite, and subscribe. Drifter out.